the second half kickoff. Uh, keep it the same way. That was a good clean first half. Same way for the second half. Uh, Marblehead, it's your option. What would you like to do? Receive. You're going to receive. What would you say? Okay, put your backs that way. Marblehead, put your backs that way. Marblehead will receive the second half kickoff. Shake hands, guys. Bring your teams right out. All right, we're set here for second half action. The score 14 to nothing. What a terrific. Uh, Presentation at halftime by the Beverly High School Band. We congratulate them on, on a terrific show. Great musicians. Boy, do those kids work hard. I was told this week that those kids were working at 9.30 at night this week in the parking lot of Beverly High School. Oh, you can drive by the high school basically any night and see the uh, the band out there uh, working hard, getting their routine down pat. They do a great job every year. Uh, they're very consistent. The score, 14 to nothing. The Panthers on top of Marblehead. They have scored on two touchdown passes thrown by Justin Shares. The first one to Corey Harrington, a 50-yard touchdown uh, pass with some nifty work by Harrington after the catch. And the second one to Joe Levesque, a 15-yard touchdown pass. And Casey Harrison kicked both extra points to put the Panthers on top, 14 to nothing. And they're going to kick off to start the second half. And you've got some stats for us for the first half, Jason. Yes, I certainly do. Actually, the stats are provided by uh, Salem News reporter Mike Grenier. Terrific, Bella. Eugene Moore, 11 rushes for 66 yards. Justin Shears rushed the ball four times for 59 yards. And he's three for three on passing for 67 yards. And for Marblehead, Andy Whipple is the leading ground gainer with 52 yards on five carries. All right, Harrison ready, gets his foot into it, a short kick this time, and it's gonna take a couple of bounces, picked up by an up back. That's number 20, who is not in the program as number usual. And he gets to the 35, 36 yard line. He was slowed down by 23 Cliff Ambrose and, and until he was brought down by, I believe it was 17 Harrington. I could be wrong though. We believe that's Cliff Tyler, who was the five feet, five inches and 140 pounds that uh, ran back that kickoff for the Magicians. They'll take over at their own 36 yard line, first and 10. And they immediately start with wide receivers to either side. Whipple calling signals to give. Whipple Ooh. keeps the ball and is belted down by Pelletier and Page. Pelletier fighting off the block and getting the shoestrings of Whipple and taking him down for a short gain. Second down, second and eight. Second down and eight. Mike Ventresca limping off the field, coming off slow. He looks like he was placed by 67, Jared Sullivan. And Ventresca, by the way, had a pretty good first half. He sure did. Marblehead this time just sends one receiver to the top of the screen. This time Whipple with the give to Fitzgerald. He's the speedster, and he gets up to the 45, 46-yard line before Mike Goldenberg brings him down. Didn't see a lot of uh, Fitzgerald in the first half due to injury, so and it looks like they're going to go to him a, a little bit more here in the second half. And as you can tell, we knew he had good speed, but that carry just proved it for me. It'll be third and a less than a yard for Marblehead. Beverly. They're selling t-shirts and sweatshirts for the hundreds. Defensive line led that time by Nate Pelletier. He's in the middle. Down under the left goal post. Mike Gall and Jared Sullivan are on either side of him. They give to 32 Guthars, and he's got a fight for that first down. I think he got it, but boy, not without a fight that time. If they had to get two feet, he got two feet and an inch. Yeah, Beverly doing a good job keeping their ground. 67 getting off the, the bottom of that pile, Jared Sullivan. I was glad to see that uh, one of my friends who was a reserve running back for the Panthers is back in action and dressed for the game today, Pat Doyle. Doyle will see an awful lot of action next year very fast. First and 10 for Marblehead. Whipple this time with the give to uh -oh. number nine, Shea, and Shea gets down to the 40-yard line, picking up about 13 yards and a first down. Nice for run. The nice run up the middle by, by Shea, brought down by Justin Shears, and if Justin Shears didn't take him down, Shea was in for six. Mike Smith now comes in the ball game for the Panthers on defense and replaces Nick Bryan. Good to see Michelle Thunberg here at the game. Ooh, fumble. fumble, and it's recovered by Whipple. Oh, man, that could have been a big break for the Panthers right there. Big break, definitely, but it looks like it was a mix-up between Whipple and the running back. Here's the replay. I believe the running back, and that was Mike Shea, wasn't it? Number nine? nine. Yes, Mike it was. Shea, yeah. But both Shea and Whipple jump right back on the football. 
Second down and 12 for Marblehead. Now they're in the Beverly territory at the 43 yard line. Number 80, Larry Turner split wide to the left. Number four, Joe Keller to the right this time. Whipple flips the ball over to Heafy. Oh! Belted down by Justin Shears for a loss. And Shears just came up shoulder to shoulder to belt him down. Looks like Eugene Moore was in on the hit as well. Ooh. Heafy's belt got rung on that one. I was watching Moore on that play specifically, and his eyes were straight Here's in the, the back. Let's watch. watch watch, him go backwards when he gets hit. I believe it was Moore. Yes, it was. Oh, it was Moore. I'm sorry. I thought it was Shears. But yes. Boy, he did go backwards. Third and 15 now for the Marblehead Magicians, and let's see what Whipple does with the football. Nice tackle. Moore just zoning in on his target and hit right through him. He has not thrown to a wide receiver yet. Get that ball! And he still isn't. Uh-oh, we got a flea flicker. And oh, a fumble! Blast. The ball is loose. That's a fumble. And it is going to be recovered by the Panthers. It's either Mike Gall or Nick Grind that has it. Or Brian, who's got that. First down, double Van de Gobart has the football. Moore, one more time. We have an official timeout. We have an injured player on the field. Here's the replay. I believe we got a man down for Marblehead. Who makes the hit? Moore. Moore makes the hit. The ball is loose. And Brian Van de Gobert, I, Van de Gobert, I believe, is the guy that recovered the football. Yeah, it looks like Van de Gobert. Mike Shea did. is still down on the field as he's being attended to now by the. Marblehead people. Whipple just getting hammered by Eugene oh, Moore. Out. He got hit awfully oh. hard. Causing the fumble in the in the Beverly defense led by Van de Bogart on top of the ball. Great field position for Beverly on the Marblehead 31-yard line. I don't think he saw Moore coming because he had no way to protect himself from that hit. And Moore coming in on a stunt, untouched. Marblehead doing a poor job protecting their quarterback. Well, that wasn't the quarterback. No, that was their half. Oh, that's right. That, that was excuse a me. That was Shea. option play, and Shea wanted to throw the ball. But You're right. Boy, by the time he got his fingers on the laces, he was popped. You're right. That was Shea. Big break for the Panthers. First and 10 at the 31-yard line of Marblehead. They're on top, 14 to nothing. Casey Harrison goes to the right-hand side, the bottom of your screen. Justin Shares is the quarterback. Shares straight ahead to Goldenberg. Goldenberg still on his feet. Breaking tackle after tackle is down to the 20, the 15 yard line, and still oh. on his feet. Refusing to go down. He's down at the 14. First down for the Panthers. A 16 yard pickup for Mike Goldenberg. Mike Goldenberg, nothing fancy. Two hands on the ball and just bullying his way for a first down. Mike must have broke three tackles on that play. Watch this now. He is hit originally right past the end watch of scrimmage. This, watch a spin move. Watch this now spin two. move. Three, he's still going and finally brought down Andy Whipple, one of the many, in on the tackle along with Mike Donawa. Goldenberg using the spin very effectively. Shares this time. Keeps and gives now to outside Ooh. to Moore, and he's dropped for a yard loss. Nice defensive play by Gutos. On that play, Eugene has got to, uh, he can't stop running the football. He hesitated a little bit, and he could have got, you know, one or two more yards. He, he just has to go straight for the corner and, and hope uh, hope something's, uh, something's there for room. Second and 12 for the Panthers. He lost two on that one. Casey Harrison, bottom of the screen, actually out of the screen to the right-hand side. The give straight ahead to Moore. He gets a couple, maybe four, and it'll be third and about eight. I'm thinking Brzezinski, because we haven't seen really, well, we've seen Justin Shears carry the ball about five times, but on that play, the, the, the defenders from Marblehead are getting sucked into the middle, uh, obviously anticipating Goldenberg and Moore, and, and the corners are wide open for a Justin Shears bootleg. Beverly now doesn't send a receiver wide. Casey Harrison comes in as the wing back. Shares calls the signals, gives to Harrison wide. Oh. Harrison has an opportunity trying to get wide. Oh, a oh. great open field tackle that time by number four, Joe Casey Kelleher, Harrison dropping Harrison at the nine yard line. And it'll be fourth down for Beverly. Harrison tried to put a little shake and bait, but Kelleher didn't bit and stood his ground and made a nice tackle. Nice open field tackle. Watch this open field tackle. Harrison coming wide now, and boom. Nice tackle by Joe Kelleher. 5.30 to go here in the first half, uh, third quarter, rather. It's 14-0, Beverly on top. And now we have 
We have a timeout on the field. Beverly. Beverly has called the timeout. Now I wonder why they're calling a timeout here with the they're on the drive. They've taken over on a turnover. What's the uh, philosophy here? Well, I know, Mike, uh, you know, we're, we're down fourth and about, I don't know, four. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the first down will put them around the, the four-yard line. But, if you know, they always have the choice of number 24 kicking a field goal right here in this position. They, I wonder if that's what the question is right now. We've been waiting be. to see that all year. I, I know, because he's got a great leg. I mean, this is so makeable for Harrison. It's, uh, it's, it's definitely an option. It's definitely something Rosinski has to think about. Harrison is in the lineup as well. He has been the wingback for the Panthers, and maybe they called the timeout because he just carried the ball, let him catch his breath, and then kicked the field goal. Okay, let's see what the Panthers are going to do. The ball is on the eight-yard line, so it would be eight and seven or 15, 25 yards away, which is very makeable for him. And it looks like they're just going to run a play. All that anticipation. I know. Cher is calling the signals. Fakes one way. He's got a clear ceiling the other way. Looks to throw. Now he doesn't. Now he picks it up. Goes. And he's... I think he's got to be at the goal line. No, he's not in the end zone. He's at the one-foot line if he's not. But good enough for a first, first down. down. First down for the Panthers. Goal. Justin Shares faking the pass and, and just uh, making the defense hesitate for a moment. Maybe we can see a replay here as this kid is very, very athletic, and you can tell he's an experienced quarterback. And when you're, when you're defending Justin Shears, he can pass the ball, but more importantly, he's a great runner. Here comes the replay. Watch Shares now. He's going to fake the pass here as he comes wide to the right. Right here. There it is. As the Panthers now first and goal. Live action. Shares gives to Goldenberg. Touchdown, Beverly. Touchdown, Goldenberg, Goldenberg in there untouched. Couldn't have been any easier for the Panthers. Untouched, Goldenberg. And the score now goes to 20 to nothing as Mike Goldenberg is in the end zone for a one-yard touchdown run here in the third quarter. That was a nice sustained drive by the Panthers. Goldenberg going over that right side, virtually untouched. Right, basically right over number 77, uh, Pelletier. Excuse me, Jared Sullivan, 67. Casey Harrison will try for his third extra point. Justin Shares will hold. Perfect snap, ball down, kick up, and kick is good. Oh, man, Once Casey again. Harrison got a foot. Once again, Casey Harrison. Well, the decision to go for it on fourth down pays off for the Panthers in a huge way, 21-0 lead. I, I've got to compliment Craig Bowman, uh, the young freshman who is a quarterback Definitely. on the freshman team and the center here on long snaps. Three uh, opportunities here for extra points. Perfect snaps back to Justin Shares uh, to line up these extra points. Well, being a quarterback, Bowman does have great poise. And, he's, you know, being a freshman thrust into the, a very important position, being the long snapper on punts and field goals and extra points, uh, doing a great job. Beverly on top, 21 to 0. There is 5-10 to go here in the third quarter. Two second quarter uh, touchdowns and one here in the third quarter have put them up. 21-0 as we look at the <coughs> crowds here. And a nice shot there of Casey Harrison, the Beverly High School kicker. And a, and a great crowd here today, Mike. It's a beautiful day for a football game, and uh, the Beverly Faithful are, are out here supporting their team. It's always nice to see. Where were they two weeks ago when it was raining and cold when we were here they were by watching, ourselves? Watching college football. Harrison gets a good foot into it, and it's taken there by number 80, Larry Turner. At his own 10, he's at the 15, the 20, the 23, still on his feet, and now dragged down by Cliff Ambrose, I believe. Yes, Cliff Ambrose in on the stock. Actually, I believe, I believe it was Pat Belmonte. Ambrose slowed him down, but Belmonte okay. came in to clean it up. Ambrose on the, on the tackle for Beverly. First and 10, Marblehead. And Marblehead has got to be a deflated football team, down 21 to nothing. Uh, some of their best players are injured, but they're still in the ball game. Tough kids, especially uh, Gutierrez, 32. The Magicians will take over first and 10 at their own 23-yard line. And they go to their traditional split offense. One running back in motion, but they give it to the first man through. That's Fitzgerald. He's Ooh. belted down at the 25-yard line. <coughs> Ryan Fitzgerald on the carry from Marblehead. 65 
Ben DeGobert in on the stop. 66 Brian also in there for the um, Panthers. It'll be second and about seven. Looks like Mike Smith is in their linebacker replacing, I believe, Eugene Moore, giving Eugene a little bit of a rest. And I think he earned it. I yeah, think so, too. Back to pass, goes Whipple, looks, throws, co Ooh. incomplete. Had his man Shea, but Shea couldn't hold on to it, covered by Justin Shares. Even though Shea dropped that ball, Whipple showing a nice arm. That was a, that was a pretty hard throw. Well, as I said, I had seen him a couple of times before, and he can throw the football. Yes, he can. I believe the quarterback last year with a, with a, was a kid by the name of Keith Como. And right. Como actually hooked up with Whipple on a number of pass plays. Como was about six foot five, six foot six. Good athlete. Great athlete, yeah. It'll be third and seven for Marblehead. Gutos in, mo in motion, but Whipple keeps the ball and tries to get ahead, but can't as he's dropped from behind by number 55, Mike Smith, right around the ankles. Nice tackle by Smith. 55, Michael Smith on a nice tackle for Beverly. Fourth down, fourth Marblehead's going to punt. I don't think they gained too much on that, so it'll be fourth and about four. Roger Rosinski sending back number 23, Cliff Ambrose, and number 20, Eugene Moore. Good shot at Cliff Ambrose. Steve Lewis will do the punting for Marblehead. And he's got a connection in Beverly. Does he now? He and does. I'm sure he you're going to tell the famous us. first cousin of Chris the Boomer Lewis. Okay. Former Marble Beverly Head. High School football and hockey player. I know Chris. Everybody <laughs> knows the Boomer. And Marblehead taking a timeout. Why? I have no idea. I don't think they had 11 guys on the field. That, that, that could have been, been a problem. But I like the way Beverly, Beverly's coming off a, a tough game against Gloucester, losing, uh, uh, what is it, 36 to 22. And mentally, I know a lot of people were a little bit, a little bit nervous about the Panthers coming into this game because Marblehead coming in 0 and 5, you know, coming on a 13 game losing streak. The Panthers were in prime position for an upset, but they, their heads are in the game. They're playing great power football. Uh, along with the arm of Justin Shears, 21 nothing. Coach Rzinski couldn't ask for anything better. No, he couldn't, and, and I think that, that this is a compliment to him to get the team focused back on a game. You know, when you're undefeated and you're in first place and everybody starts to watch you, mm. it's tough when you drop away from that, uh, mm -hmm. that pitcher. Ooh. Straight up, Lewis kicks it, and the ball will take a marblehead bounce to the 43-yard line, and Beverly will ball take over first and 10. Beverly had a punt rush on, and number 77, Pelletier, came about two steps away from blocking the punt of, of Lewis. Steve Lewis doing a good job just getting the, the kick off that time. First and 10 for the Panthers. They're at the marblehead 43-yard line. Close the door. Marblehead not doing a very good job protecting their punter. You heard Roger Rosinski that time saying to Justin, let's get him downfield and let's close the door. 21 to nothing, the Panthers are on top. The running game has been superb for Beverly this afternoon, and now we have whistles all over the place. Marblehead, that's number two. Timeout. Marblehead has asked second. for a timeout. Marblehead. I tell you, Callagy traditionally uses every timeout he is given. Justin Shares now will come over and just briefly talk with Roger Rosinski. The play had already been called when the timeout was called, so I guess they're going to go with the exact same play that they had originally called. You know something, Justin Shears has thrown the ball well today, but hasn't really needed to throw the ball other than when he did throw it. I mean, they, they have not been careless about opening up the game. They've stuck right to their yeah. game plan today. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when they did have to throw, he's perfect. Three for three, two touchdowns. And he has a luxury of two guys that he knows can catch the ball, Harrington and Levesque. All right, here come the Panthers. First and 10, 43-yard line of Marblehead. Shares, back to pass. Looks over the middle, throws. He's got Levesque open at the 30. He's got it at the 20. He's going to go all the way. Touchdown, 43 yards. Again, the ball faking of Shares has just been fantastic. That's a sign of a veteran quarterback. Nice play action fake. Again, great protection. And Levesque, it always helps when Levesque is wide open. Here comes a replay, Mike. Watch the faking into the middle. Nice. They don't even see Shares till it's too late. Only one guy, Phil Norton, realized that. And Levesque 
had nobody I could have scored on that one. <laughs> Levesque showing good, good, good wheels and good determination getting in the end zone. Casey Harrison will attempt the extra point. Shares will hold. Shares has now thrown three touchdown passes today. Down, spot up, kick is up, and it is good. Another Even good when he doesn't get a, a good foot into it, he gets it over there. Definitely. 28 to nothing, the Beverly Panthers now really thumping Marblehead. Panthers are just rolling right now. They, everything is clicking. The passing is clicking. The, the great blocking. As uh, it did against Danvers. Yes, it did. They, and actually Classical, although Classical gave them a little bit better run for their money. That's uh, true. Uh, with a better offense. Um, against Danvers, I thought they had a near-perfect game, and they're doing it again today. This will be their fifth win of the season. Good start for Beverly, winning five out of their first six. Great start, and plus we've got Swamps get the big blue coming into Hurt Stadium next week, and that is a big game for Beverly. Um, you always like to be, you like to play Swamps because you like to beat them. You know, they're just one of those type of teams that have so much success in the 90s and the 80s, and you just love beating them. This is the year that they can be beaten. And this is the year I hope Beverly, you know, comes out, and they just going to need a good week of practice coming up, uh, coming to that game with, with mentally focused. All right, Casey Harrison set now to kick the ball off. Larry Turner is on the near side for Marblehead. In the middle will be number nine, Michael Shea. And on the far side, number seven, Andy Whipple. Let's go, kick two! Here comes Harrison with another good boot into the ball. Shea has it at his own five, fumbles it back to the one. Picks it back up at the five, trying to get outside of the 10, Ooh. and he's dropped around the 13, 14 yard line. Shea with the carry, 52, Hirschfeld on the tackle. Ryan Hirschfeld, the man in to make the stop for the Panthers. And Beverly right now just want to stuff Marblehead and take the ball on offense and just Marblehead right now is just a, a, a deflated football team and has a lot to do with the Beverly offense and defense. Well, they're getting not only just beaten on the scoreboard, they're just getting the ball pounded to them. That's right. I mean, it's a physical beating. Whipple brings his team out. First and 10 at his own 13, 14 yard line. Back to pass. He's rushed. Oh! Dropped from behind on a nice tackle by Adam Page. Oh, just missed by, let me just take a look. I believe it was 79 Keating. 75, I think it was. Was it 79? It was. Yeah, 79 Keating. Justin Keating just missed him. Shed his, shed his block, did a nice spin move, but just couldn't take the run. That slowed the running back down, Shea. Hey. Second down and about eight as Whipple picked up two. The ball's at about the 17-yard line. Good shot there of Peter Harrington, the line coach, uh, veteran line coach of the Beverly High School team. But remember, he played for Salem in the traditional game. That's, yes, he did. <laughs> but he joined the good side. Up the middle goes number nine, Michael Shea. Across the 20 to the 21 yard line. Nice tackle by and, uh, Smith, yeah. 65. and I do want to congratulate Coach Harrington. He uh, he was he was the brainchild behind Pop Warner Day here at Hurd Stadium. Um, before the game, they announced the the A through D teams of the Beverly Pop Warner football teams. Uh, Coach Harrington was uh, the the head of that, along with the Beverly Pop Warner coaches and 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 parents. Congratulations to them. Third and three, the ball on the 22, the give is to Shea. Shea's across the 25, first down, and he's belted from behind, but he was down before he is fumbled. The stop made by Michael Smith. Smith making a nice tackle. Marblehead putting together uh, some nice runs, trying to save some, uh, save some pride. Well, at the beginning of this football game, in the first quarter, although neither team scored, Marblehead put together a very good drive. They started at their 11, mm -hmm. and it ended up at the Beverly 11. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a darn good drive, but they just haven't been able to put anything on the board. No, they haven't really just, uh, sustained anything. Two wide receivers again out for Marblehead as the fumble, fumble on the ball, but Whipple picks it up and is belted there by half of the Beverly defensive line. Smith, Adam Page in on the stop, and it'll be second and 11. Mike Gall in, in on as well. And again, really haven't seen the arm of Whipple that often in this football game. Well, if they want to get back in it, they're going to have to see it pretty yeah. darn quick because uh, Gr yeah, grinding down 28 to nothing. Yeah. We're about uh, a minute to go in the third quarter. Whipple rolling right. Can't get the ball away. Shares drops him from behind at the 28-yard line, maybe the 29. Beverly defense showing good pursuit and taking down Whipple. Whipple on the quarterback keeper. 
I tell you, Mike, uh, grinding it out the way Marblehead is doing it right now really isn't going to get it done. Third and eight, the ball now on the Beverly 29-yard line, maybe 30. Third down, eight yards. By the way, if you haven't turned your clocks back an hour, you lost an hour of sleep yesterday. Turn them back. Back comes Whipple, looks, throws, Ooh. incomplete, almost intercepted by Smith. And again, Van de Bogart bringing the heat on Whipple. Whipple is not having a good day throwing the ball, and for good reason, Beverly defenders are in his face every time he drops back to pass. Scott Lewis, uh, Steve Lewis rather, will again be forced to punt the football for Marblehead. We're down to 11 seconds in the third quarter. This will be the last play of the third quarter. Cliff Ambrose and Eugene Moore back. Again, he gets the ball up high, but not very deep. And it takes a Marblehead bounce across the 45 to the 47-yard line. We're down there. And again, terrific field position for the Panthers. It looks like the Panthers are going to go with their starters to open the, uh, the fourth quarter. Well, I think Roger Rosinski would pull the starters if Marblehead would do the same first. Uh, I don't think he's got a problem doing that at all. Well, actually, it, it, will, it will be Roger's choice to pull them first. It's uh, usually the team that is ahead will do that. And uh, the, the losing team will pull. Well, not in the Danvers game, but hopefully in this game they'll do the same. That's the end of three quarters. The score, 28 to nothing. Beverly on top will be back for the fourth quarter after these messages. Technology. It's made the other side of the world seem closer than the other side of town. But you don't live on the other side of the world. You live here. And that's why Media One's been connecting houses to our interactive broadband network here. And here. And here. Because you want to be a part of that PTA meeting without leaving the kids. You want to find out how your local team is doing. Whoa! You want to know what traffic's like. Or maybe you just want to avoid traffic altogether by getting just as much done from home. At Media One, we believe our interactive broadband network is the way that you'll do it. Nice shoes. Media One. This is broadband. This is the way. TV Sports here, fourth quarter action, and Beverly will be called for a legal procedure on that play. It is first and ten for the Panthers. They had the ball in the Marblehead 47-yard line. Referees will mark off a five-yard penalty and make it first and 15 for the Panthers. Our camera crew consists of Steve Pike, Dave Jeleno, Tom Blazer, and Mark Crory. Our production assistants today are Michael Jeleno and Jacob Pike, and our executive producer and director is Jim Capillo. Hi, Michael Bryan, alongside Jason Young. Beverly on top, 28 to nothing, and outside of the first quarter, they have just dominated this football game, Jason. On both sides of the football, offensively and defensively, and I look, look for it to continue in the fourth quarter. Shares this time gives to Goldenberg straight ahead. Mike Goldenberg has got some room, and oh. he's dropped. After picking up uh, 15, 16 yards. Goldenberg, just the epitome of a no-nonsense type of runner, straight ahead and just bulls his way to a first down. Mike Tyler makes the touchdown saving catch at the 30-yard line, 35-yard line on the replay. Watch Goldenberg go. He gets by Whipple and... Levesque uh, smartly didn't try to throw a block that time because he would have been called for clipping. First and ten for the Panthers. They're at the 35-yard line of Marblehead. Shares is the quarterback. Has three touchdown passes less far today. He pitches to Goldenberg. Here he goes again the left side. 30, 27-yard oh. line. Picks up eight yards. Mike Goldenberg on the carry for Beverly. Four. Body, Joe Michael Kelleher Kyle in on the, the stop for the Marblehead. Marblehead Magicians along with Michael Shea. Mike Goldenberg, 5'11", 210 pounds. That is a big backfield for the Panthers with Goldenberg and Moore. Second down and a couple of yards to go for the first down. Beverly again pounding on the Marblehead door. Shares. 
Myers. This time, gives to number 20, and that's Eugene Moore. He crosses the 15, the 14, maybe the 13-yard line. First down for the Panthers. Looks like Moore's second effort got him that first down. First down, Beverly. Number 40, Rocco Nazzolo in to make the stop for Marblehead. One thing about these, uh, especially Goldenberg and Moore, it's so hard to take them down. It's, it's not going to take one guy. You're going to have to have three or four uh, defenders to take either one of those guys down. Wide to the right side is Casey Harrison. Shares calling signals. Rolling to the right. Got a great block from Mike Smith. He's down inside the 15 to the 14, 13, maybe even the 10-yard line. Mike Smith, nice block to spring Shears. Just cut down the, the uh, Marblehead magician. And that'll do it for the first string offense. Uh, nice gesture by Roger Rosinski as his second string team will now come in the football game. Pat Del Monte will be the quarterback as a good hand is received from the varsity football team by the Beverly High School faithful. What a great showing it was, Mike. Uh, the Beverly up first offense, first defense. They did a great job. Timeout, Monte. And they get a well-deserved hand from the from a great crowd here today. And it's good that uh, Roger pulled him when he did. Didn't decide to go in for the fifth touchdown of the right. game. He let he let these kids uh, let allow the second team to have that opportunity. Excellent. You know, doing it like I've always said, the second team plays just as hard, practices just as hard as the first team. Plus, you don't want to show up the uh, opposing coach or teams. No need to. No need at all. I mean, Marblehead. This is going to be the 14th consecutive loss. They're going to drop to 0 and 6. They, they don't need the uh, they don't need that at all. For Beverly now, they'll have my friend Ryan Hirschfeld at center, number 52. Jacob Chadwell will be at one end. We'll have Justin Keating at tackle. I believe Cliff Ambrose will be one running back for the Panthers. And number 34, Stephen Lang will be another running back. We still got some first stringers in there for Marblehead, 54, Norton, 72, Marquis. Also on the line will be Mike Gall at right tackle. Pat Belmonte will call the signals for the Panthers. Belmonte gives to Ambrose, and Ambrose gets to the 10, maybe, maybe just the 11, and he's dropped there by the Pat middle Doyle of the, the that's Pat Doyle, I'm sorry. Nice to see Pat Doyle back in the lineup now. I'd like to see him get wide because, believe me, he has some speed to burn. He's got some good wheels. Oh, he'll be the new rocket. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like uh, Steve Lang, number 34, is in there as well at running back. Pat Belmonte calls the signals. Doyle and Lang are the running backs. The give is to Lang straight ahead Lang. across the 10 down over the six yard line. Beverly offensive lines for the second team showing a nice surge. Lang doing a good job getting positive yardage. Eight minutes and counting. The Panthers on top, 28 to nothing and knocking on the Marblehead door one more time. <clears throat> That's a very tired uh, Marblehead defensive front. Still yes, have the is. starters. Marquis, a big man, you know, bent over. He's a tired guy. Had a good first half, though, individually. Belmonte trying to keep himself and gets inside the five to the four, and it'll be fourth down for the Panthers. Fourth down at about three, four yards to go. Uh, at least, no, they're marking the ball at the five-yard line. Got to believe Beverly just play conservative, down. hand the ball off, or it's going to be a Belmonte keeper up the middle. Line. Pat Belmonte following in the footsteps of his brother Joel, who was the quarterback for Beverly in 1996 and 1995. Give is to Lang straight at... Ooh. No, it's a, a keeper, I'm sorry, wow. by Belmonte. I thought Lang had the football, and Belmonte is dropped for a loss. This is something unusual, Mike. Beverly sending their first team defense out in the field. Well, and the only thing I can think of is they're trying to preserve the shutout because Marblehead has not put in any reserves yet. I think that, that could be it as well. But now we're seeing some substitutes go in for Beverly. Yep, I believe that is uh, number 60. 
going into the game. I believe, I believe that's the freshman, Mark McDonald. Okay. Brother of David McDonald, who was a great player here last year for Beverly. Two-way offensive tackle, offensive and defense. Ball kept by quarterback Whipple. He's up the middle, up to the 20, Ooh. and a great tackle by Cliff Ambrose with assistance from Adam Page from behind. But Ambrose stuck him with his shoulder right below the knees. Ambrose. First down for... Marblehead at the 21-yard line. Ambrose doing exactly what a guy that's 5'7 is going to do to tackle a guy that's 6'2. Take get his down legs down very low. Take, get down low and take his legs out. <clears throat> First and 10 for Marblehead. Man in motion, and Fumble. ball is dropped behind the line of scrimmage, and it's recovered by the Panthers. Oh. Fumble, Number 50, Adam Page, is the man who recovered the football, and Beverly, again, goes back on offense. Got to say, Adam Page has quite a ball game for himself defensively. One of Beverly's finest just walking into the stadium on up the bleachers, Tim Flaherty. First down, Beverly on their bottle-headed 20-yard line. An old Beverly running back during the Super Bowl years in the early 80s. Uh, yeah, 84, 85. His wife, Ian, is the Beverly High School trainer, and they're expecting number four. Are nice little really? Irish wow. clan. <laughs> Congratulations to the Flaherty's. Ball going straight ahead that time. Lang carries the ball. He's belted down by the middle of the marble headline. Gutos, the first man in on the play. Jim Wilson uh, going into the game, number 73, and replacing uh, Mike Gall, number 72. Jimmy Wilson, this is the first opportunity for Jimmy to dress for a game. He's a senior, and it's good to see him get the opportunity to play. Yeah, he's been injured, I believe, all... Uh, yes, he has. Yeah, Preseason and, and thus far, the regular season. Oh, we got guys off sides on the left side of the line from Marblehead. They jumped. Let's see if they were drawn off. Got to think it's going Beverly's way. Yes, it is. Yep. Five yards. Finally, the big guy, Marquis, number 72, getting out of the ballgame, as well as the captain, number 54, Phil Norton, leaving the game. Wow, we got to remind the official to turn that. Uh, remaining in the game and running. If you aren't awake, you are now. <laughs> All right, it'll be second and five for the Panthers as Ryan Hirschfeld comes up over the ball first. Pat Doyle and Steve Lang are the running backs. Pat Belmonte is the quarterback. The give is to Lang straight ahead, and he gets down to the 10-yard line. It'll Steve be Lang third. And he's very close to the first down. Jonathan nice. Garcia now comes in for running back, replacing Pat Doyle. Garcia showing his uh, first playing time in the game today. I think first, first playing time, period. No, actually, he played the Danvers game. Did he? Yes, okay. he did. Garcia at the left side, wing number 35, Lang number 34. They give us to Lang straight ahead, and he's down to the seven yard line. It'll be second down. And seven. About seven, yeah. Seven for the first down and eight for the touchdown. With the second unit in Beverly is just, you know, playing it very conservatively, running it up the middle. But they actually, uh, Steven, well, they're running a Steven Lang. They're doing pretty good. Lang getting some good yardage. But all, all the uh, offensive line of Beverly, the second team offensive line, opening up some holes for the running backs. Pat Doyle back in the game for the Panthers. Pat Belmonte fakes, looks to come the straight ahead and is belted down and they've tried that a couple of times and Pat has taken a, a whiplash on that yeah, one. Yeah, definitely. Loss of a yard, I'd say, or maybe 
Get back to the line of scrimmage. One thing I do want to mention, Mike, is the Beverly freshman team, I believe, are still undefeated. They defeated Gloucester on Wednesday, and uh, that's a good sign for the future of Beverly High School football. We're down at 324 and counting here. Beverly on top, 28 to nothing. It's third and five. They're inside the 10-yard line at the eight of Marbleheads. They had their second unit in. Pat Belmonte is the quarterback. Belmonte, again, keeps the football, trying to go straight ahead and does, and gets down inside the five to the four, maybe the three-yard line. I think he's still short of the first down. I think that's going to make it fourth down and goal. Actually, no, they actually can get a first down. They can get a first down. That's yep, right. they can get a first down. The Beverly High School cheerleaders, obviously a little bit cleaner this week than they were two weeks ago here when they were diving in the mud and putting on a pretty good show for us in the rain against Danvers. Pat Belmonte just oh. takes a knee. I think that was instructed. Oh, that definitely. was instructed. I think Roger Rosinski definitely. said, take a knee. That's a, t that's a touch of class by Roger Rosinski. No need to pour on the points. 28 to nothing lead. Beverly now sending in, clearing the bench and sending in everybody that hasn't had an opportunity to play. Scott Oxton, number 58, the big guy, 6'4", 290, is in the ballgame for the Panthers, along with 64, Eric Conant, 5'10", 230-pound sophomore, getting his first opportunity to play. What do we, looks like Ryan Hirschfeld will be playing linebacker along with, what do we have out there? Reed Davenport is also in the game. Reed, Reed Davenport. Davenport is a 6'2", 175 sophomore. We got some size in there for the Panthers. Straight ahead goes Fitzgerald across the 15-yard line before Belmonte and Lang make the stop. Number We're down at two minutes. And that is a two-minute warning. The two-minute two minute warning is up. The Panthers are up 28-0, and minutes, Beverly has dominated this football game. Start to finish, Brian Osborne now reports in for the Panthers. Osborne will be replacing uh, 52 Hirschfeld, I believe, at the linebacker position. Let's take a look. Yep, that is the case. A give straight ahead for no yardage that time. Getting up off is uh, Jake, Jacob Chadwell making the tackle. Joe Kelleher was the running on that play. <coughs> This time the give goes straight ahead again as Marblehead uh, conceding the football game, just throwing the ball straight ahead, not even making an attempt to open it up a little Fumble. bit and gamble. And the ball has been fumbled and recovered by the Panthers. Panthers, second team, doing a great job. I saw Roger Rosinski say to Pat Belmonte, we'll just go down on a knee. Yeah. But if Roger Rosinski was nervous before this football game and said he didn't have a good week of practice, his team looked very crisp. Beverly responded well. Yeah, they, they did not have a good week of practice, and uh, they were primed for an upset. This Marblehead club coming in, not uh, you know not getting blown out, but with an 0-5 record. But Beverly just took it to them in the air and on the ground. One thirty-one remaining. Pat Belmonte, the quarterback, steps back, drops to a knee, and he'll have to do that one or two more times here to run the clock out. But the Panthers have been dominant since the beginning, actually, of the second quarter. Justin Shears has thrown three touchdown passes. Has to be our player of the game. Definitely, that has to be a record. When was the last time a Beverly quarterback threw three touchdown passes, let alone three passes in a football game? 
Shares was very sharp today, throwing a 50-yard touchdown pass to Corey Harrington, a 15-yard touchdown pass to Joe Levesque, and then another touchdown pass to Levesque, 43 yards. So Shares has had a pretty good football day this afternoon. Threw the ball well, ran the ball well, just ran the offense perfectly today. And also, you know, to add to that, he played some great defense. Played, yes, great, he uh, did. Played really good in that secondary. Beverly has been hit with a delay of game penalty, so they'll have uh, probably just time for one last play. 44 seconds remaining in the football game. Belmonte again steps back, drops to a knee. And that should just about take care of the football game, although they may have to run one more play with only 38 seconds left. They're telling uh, Belmonte just to do the exact same thing. Yeah, just milk the clock and let's get out of here with a victory. Well, the Panthers have done that this afternoon as we're 25 seconds and counting. They have defeated the Marblehead Magicians 28 to nothing. That should do it. That will do it. That's the last play of the football game with 10 seconds remaining. The final score, Beverly 28, Marblehead nothing. We'll be back for the wrap-up in just a moment. This year, more than 2 million high school students will receive something very important. Something only a high school education can provide. opportunity to become a United States Marine. Don't throw your education away. For more information, call now. As the two teams come out and shake hands here in the Beverly High School uh, marching band puts up the fight song. Jason Young, I see you dancing a little bit to that. <laughs> yeah. The Panthers have won 28 to nothing in the first quarter. Neither team was able to score with the second quarter. Justin Shares threw two touchdown passes. One to Corey Harrington for 50 yards and one to Joe Levesque for 15 yards. Two uh, after point attempts by Casey Harrison were successful and the Panthers were on top at halftime 14 to nothing. In the third quarter they scored two more touchdowns. Mike Goldenberg had a one yard run and again Shares threw his third touchdown pass of the afternoon a 14, a 43-yard pass to Joe Levesque. Levesque's second touchdown of the afternoon. Harrison kicking both extra points. He was four for four in that category, and that should do it. A nice 28 to nothing win. Nice 28 to nothing win, and it's a good win for Beverly this week. Uh, coming in on Saturday is the Big Blue of Swampskate, and they really need to uh, get mentally prepared and physically prepared to take on the Big Blue. We will have that game for you here on BEB TV Sports, and for our staff, Steve Pike. Dave Gellano, Tom Blazer, and Mark Crory, our excellent uh, camera crew. Mm -hmm. Our production assistants, Jacob Pike, Mike Gellano, and our executive director and producer, Jim Capello. And, of course, my partner here, Jason Young. I'm Mike O'Brien for BEB TV Sports. Have a very pleasant evening.